Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm Christy Webb from Wearscape, and we're here today with Gloria Georgieva from PRA Group. Um, Gloria is an acclaimed award-winning data engineer at PRA Group, leading innovation within the data and insight team. Uh, with a profound dedication to data and extensive experience, she is reshaping the landscape of data engineering. Beyond her professional achievements, Gloria excels as a multi-record breaking dancer, recently setting the record for the highest number of consecutive traditional Bulgarian dancers performed. Um, so what we'll talk about today is exploring the current landscape for women in the data industry, shedding light on the opportunities and strategies for success, uh, discussing initiatives to foster inclusivity and sharing success stories of women excelling in data science. Um, but what we want to do today is empower and inspire women to thrive in the data field. Um, so Gloria, let's begin. Um, can you share some insights on the current landscape of women in the data field, um, particularly regarding representation um, and opportunities for growth? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, hi everyone. Um, I'm so happy to see so many of you today and welcome to all of our virtual um, you know, attendees. Um, and with regards to the current landscape for women in data, it is wild. <laughs> Um, but women as a whole, we're still largely underrepresentative in STEM. So at the moment, we're looking at about 25% of, of all roles in STEM are um, you know, occupied by women. There was an upward trend back in, um, you know, before the pandemic. So we hit about 31% of um, STEM roles were occupied by women. However, as you know, the pandemic happened, things changed, um, and quite a lot more of the labor that was being done at home, child caring, uh, domestic labor, even emotional labor um, was taken on by women more than men. Um, and that combined with, you know, job loss and, you know, the current market that we are in um, led to a drop. So women dropped from 31% to about 20% in STEM. However, we are back up. Um, things, are, things are looking better. And I do have hope because Things are not the way they were fi even five years ago. Um, and actually, just even looking around, there's just more space for women to be in STEM, in science, in data, in all of these wonderful fields where, you know, there's, there's space for us um, to take. Um, it also feels a lot more intentional. So rather than us just kind of fitting in and, you know, trying to, um, you know, just trying to fit into what, what there already is, things are changing. So you see events like this one, for example, um, you see more and more women attending. Um, you, see, uh, you see women feeling comfortable to do that as well. Um, there's fantastic online spaces, Discord servers, um, you know, events tailored to women in data and women in tech in general. Um, and there's just so much more space and opportunity to support one another. Um, and if you think about it, even the fact that conferences like this one that are very, very technical have non-technical talks, that is such a phenomenal leap because we have talks about, you know, um, diversity. Um, we have leadership, interpersonal skills, uh, inclusivity. And if you think about these topics, they're all very much considered feminine. So actually, these are a crucial part of our um, you know, the world that we live in now, and it's more and more normal to see, um, you know, these talks happening, but also women in general, um, in senior and leadership positions, in, in STEM and in male-dominated fields as well. Um, and actually, I am tr thrilled to say that where I work at Pierre Group, um, we have quite a few women in um, senior leadership roles, and it's so inspirational to see other women, um, you know, being successful and paving the way mm. um, for one another. Absolutely. And then, so which strategies or initiatives do you believe are most effective in encouraging um, and supporting women to pursue careers in data science and, and other related fields? Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, so first of all, absolutely just seeing other women doing it. So even the fact that, you know, we come to these conferences and we see more and more women. We see, you know, women being successful, women winning awards, uh, women driving innovation, because we are fantastic, <laughs> right? But we just, we just need to see it. You know, you have to see it to be it, right? Mm. Um, but also hybrid and flexible working, not for what you think. But actually, 
you know, it, it benefits it benefits us, right? Because we're able to to kind of, you know, fit our personal life better within our work responsibilities, mm. and you know, do our childcare better, and you know, all of these things. But it also allows our male counterpart uh, counterparts to to do those things as well and to actually support us better. It allows them to go and do the school runs. It allows them to do, you know, laundry and all of these things, right? Um, it, it kind of um, levels the playing field a little bit better. Um, also, returner schemes. So for women who've been on maternity leave um, and need some support when they come back, mm. um, you know, need equal pay and, you know, the, the opportunity and the support to, to do well. Um, and with that hand-in-hand -hand menopause support as well, um, half of our population goes through it, and it's still a topic that we just don't talk about, and it's still something that um, not, not many people know enough about. Um, um, but actually, there's, there's so much out there to support that, and uh, there's, a, there's something called the Menopause Workforce Pledge, which our company is signed for, but it basically allows companies to support women who are going through the menopause um, with providing educational materials and also just supporting policies around that. Um, another big part is just closing the gender pay gap, right? We, we all know it's there, you know, it's bigger in some spaces than in others, it's bigger in some um, countries than others, but we just need, you know, we need companies to, to do proactive, intentional work about closing that. Um, and, you know, with, with you know, closing the gender pay gap also goes hand in hand recruitment, right? We need to be intentional about how we recruit, um, how we think about, um, you know, the, the career progression as well, because especially in technical roles, we have this narrow path of, okay, you're a junior, then you're a mid-level developer or engineer or whatever, you know, and then you become senior and then you take on a team and you manage the team and, you know, it's quite, it can be quite rigid. But actually, there's so many other ways that women can bring so much value, and you know we can we can support our organisations, we can support our our people, and um, yeah, just just thinking about different ways. So, for example, you know, going into lead roles or going into director roles where you don't necessarily have to manage people. I mean, we as women, we already manage so much, right? Um, and um, yeah. And actually, to be completely honest, leaders who are open-minded, supportive, and who are happy to educate themselves as well and to, to support their, the women working for them, um, you know, it makes a massive difference to have a fantastic person that you work for, <laughs> like mine who's <laughs> sitting over there. <laughs> um, perfect. So in your experience, what unique challenges do women often face in the data industry and what can organizations do to address these challenges, um, fostering inclusivity and diversity? Yeah, um, so I'm going to talk about three main things that we as women absolutely face all the time. So first of all, exclusion, right? The corporate world, the, the, the technical world, you know, the workforce as a whole, it's really tailored towards men. If you think about the small talk, the after work activities, the team building exercises, even even how work parties go, all of it, it is so tailored towards, you know, the male part of the population. Um, but actually, I am seeing things shifting a bit and it's less about fitting into the, sp the space and actually more about making it inclusive and, um, you know, just, just making it work for all of us. Um, and, it, and this is and this is great not just for the women but for men as well uh, because there was there was a really interesting bit of research that came from the Harvard mm. Business Review where they showed that when men and women work together in the you know in the same environment that that improves performance and that fosters inno innovative thinking. Now, what's really interesting here is that that only worked for the companies where um, gender gender diversity is perceived as an important goal. Okay, so what does that mean for us? It's something that we can drive forward and we can encourage and we can change and we can shape. And um, yeah, we are currently just shifting the norm as a whole. Now, the second point is gonna be lack of representation and loneliness. It can be so daunting being in meeting after meeting after meeting just surrounded by men, right? 
Oh, I see some nodding. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you just, you just, all your time is spent with just men, talking to men, seeing men. And men can be great. Um, but, you know, you, you, it can be quite isolating. And it can also lead to feeling like, you know, it's, it's harder to, to speak your mind, to, to bring your opinions forward. Um, and, and actually, it takes quite a lot of confidence and guts and perseverance to, to proactively speak your mind during meetings and to put forward your ideas and to, you know, not feel like the odd one out. Um, and the way, the way I think organizations internally can, can challenge this is actually foster communities that support women and support women connecting with one another. Because yes, you can be in a team that you are the only woman and that can happen and you know, through no fault, fault of anyone, it can happen. Um, but actually just talking to other women, learning about their experiences and, and just hearing their stories and what, what they have seen, what they have learned is incredibly valuable. So for example, um, where I work at PRA, we have Women's Affinities Network um, and that really allows us to connect globally with with other women and just learn from from each other's experiences from each other's you know <laughs> knowledge and um and just truly connect um which i think is great and the last one you ready for this imposter syndrome <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um i i have a strong feeling that we've all suffered at one point or another of that feeling that we we're not good enough and how do i even fit in here and oh my God, uh, you know, how, how, how was I even given this, this job? Um, but actually, <laughs> this is research shows, that, you know, the data is there, that um, this is so much more prevalent for women, unfortunately. Um, uh, and just, just remember, we're all winging it, we're all figuring it out as we're going along. Um, and a few years ago, Brent Ozark um, shared a, a really interesting thought around imposter syndrome, actually, that you shouldn't compare yourself to others anyway. You should just compare yourself to where you were five years ago, last year, 10 years ago, and just look at your own personal growth and progress. And, and also just remember that everything, everything you have, where you are today in life, you absolutely deserve to be there. Um, you, you know, you are fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. So could you perhaps discuss a project or initiative that you've been involved in that really highlights the importance of diversity in uh, data teams um, and the positive income? Yeah. yeah, sorry, positive impact it had <laughs> on the outcome. I absolutely love this question. Um, so mentoring. OK, so I've been doing mentoring for the last five years and I've mentored um, women and some men as well. And I've mentored them through their kind of junior to mid mid role career progression and this has been such a rewarding experience by the way if you've if you've never mentored i highly encourage you to do so it is it is so much fun it's so interesting and it's it's a two way experience so you 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 give a lot but you also get a lot back as well and you you kind of think about a different perspective you learn a lot about yourself and and also it it shows you it shows you different ways of doing things right um so but what's really, really interesting is that there's a stark difference between the biggest challenges that men and women have, um, you know, that I've found through mentoring. So men are very much focused on, okay, I've got this new job. What do I need to do to be successful at it? What do I need to do to learn how to do this stuff? Okay, how do I, how can I do this? How can I optimize this query? You know, they're very task oriented, which is, which is great. You know, that's part of the job, right? Um, and they're very, very focused on figuring out the role itself. Now, women, on the other hand, have a slightly different challenge that is kind of their biggest one, and it's basically how to navigate social situations, um, sometimes suffering from, from lack of confidence and being unsure of how to speak up in situations. And also, I've seen quite a lot of feeling quite scared to even ask questions in meetings because mainly they don't want to be perceived as you know less knowledgeable or less good or you know like they shouldn't even be at that meeting so you know women are more likely to just kind of take a step back and kind of retrieve <coughs> a little bit um 
but actually, if you think about it, you know, with, with, with both of those things, the goal is the same. You just want to come, you just want to become the best version of yourself. You just want to, you just want to be able to do your best and learn how to do things and, you know, just, just give your best to the company and, and to yourself, really. Um, but this in turn brings so much value because when you have different people, right, who think in different ways, who have, who have had different experiences, that's where innovation comes from. So going back to your question about, you know, diversity and, and how that brings, you know, good stuff, <laughs> effectively, when you have people who think differently, that's when you get the, the really good ideas. If you have a room full of 10 people who have the same exact experiences, they, you know, they've gone to kind of similar, uh, they've got similar education, they've had similar backgrounds in life, um, they do similar jobs, you know, culturally they're similar, one of them is going to come up with an idea, the other one is going to be like, yeah, cool, excellent. I mean, not always, but most <laughs> of the time, and there it becomes an echo chamber, right? You kind of all agree with each other. Whereas when you have different people, you know, men, women, some people with more experience, some people with less experience, that's where you get the really good stuff. And final question, um, what advice would you give to women who are aspiring to advance their careers in data science? particularly navigating obstacles and seizing opportunities for professional development? Cool. So, <laughs> obviously there's no one advice fits all, right? But from my personal experience and my personal research, um, I can give you a couple of things here. First of all, apply for any role that you see that you find that might be cool, that might be interesting. Apply for anything and everything. What's really interesting is that the numbers show the way men and women apply for, for jobs is completely different. So when a woman sees a job, she is most likely to go for it and apply if she, m she matches the criteria 100% or close to 100. Whereas men, you know, apply when they kind of match about 50%, give or take, right? So whatever you see, whatever you want to you wanna do, just go for it, just apply. Whatever gaps you have, you can always address those. You can always learn. You can always upskill. You can always do more later on. And you can even say at your interview, hey, I don't know how to do this thing, but I can, I can learn it. That's fine. We, we all have the potential to learn anything and everything. So just, just apply for, for anything that um, you find interesting. OK, say you've done your, your application and you're at the point where you've been interviewed and you know, you've been, you've been given an offer. Uh, negotiate, okay? So, <laughs> uh, it might sound silly, but the first offer is never the final offer. Um, and again, here, there's a, there's a big difference between how men and women act in these situations. So, men will just ask for more money, just flat out. <laughs> uh, whereas us as, us as women, we're more likely to just be like, okay, cool, thank you. Uh, but actually, negotiate, ask. What's the worst that can happen? They'll say no and the, the offer will be what it already was. So, yeah. Um, and also leverage online um, spaces and communities. Like I said earlier, there's fantastic Discord servers. Um, there's, there's, there's amazing um, communities, especially here in London as well. I mean, I know we're all from different places, but you know, uh, you've got conferences that are tailored to women in tech and women in data. And th there's so many opportunities and ways that we can all just connect and, you know, make friends and just make each other's lives a little bit easier. Um, you know, um, to be completely honest, women, um, we are the biggest weapon there is. So <laughs> let's just learn from one another. Um, and finally, um, I would say be exactly who you are because absolutely gone are the days that you know, you have to wear a tight pencil skirt and, you know, heels to be in the corporate environment. Uh, you know, that's no longer the case. We are breaking the norm. Um, we're going to be comfortable. Our feet are not going to hurt. Um, we can wear heels if we want to, but that's our choice. Um, and just, just remember, being a woman in STEM, um, you can be any, anything you want to be. And you can have sparkly nails and still be um, a sequel goddess. So... <laughs> 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 exactly! <laughs> Perfect. Um, I think we're, we're out of time. Um, thank you, Gloria. That was really, really insightful. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, Gloria will be at the Wearscape booth, as I think we have to clear out <laughs> if you have any questions. Um, so please pop down. I'm sure Gloria will be happy to answer any yep. questions that you may have. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone.